Hey guys, Dr. Zach here, Chief Entomologist here at Thanksgiving Point. Today, we're talking about bees. Okay, so we are here in Utah, which is the honeybee state, but did you know that honeybees are not even from Utah? They're not even from the Americas. Honeybees are from Africa and Europe, and they were brought over here in the 1600s. But that doesn't mean we don't have lots of different types of bees that are native to our area. In fact, Utah is a mecca for bees. Utah has over a thousand species of native bees. That's over a quarter of all of the bees from the United States and Canada combined. In fact, Utah is such an amazing place for bees that researchers recently found that there are as many species of bees living in just Grand Staircase National Monument as there are in the entire southeastern United States. Whoa! So people tend to have a love-hate relationship with bees. We all know that bees pollinate stuff and we love their work, but we also don't like to get stung. But here's the thing with native bees. We have over a thousand species of native bees in Utah, and most of them won't or cannot sting you. They're cute, they're fuzzy, they're totally harmless, and they're just as good or even better pollinators than honeybees. Another thing about native bees is some of them are actually more familiar than you might realize. Try this out. Get a box of crayons, go find a little kid, give him a piece of paper, and ask him to draw a bee. 20 bucks says they're gonna end up drawing something that looks more like a native bee, like a bumblebee, than a honeybee. Bumblebees are awesome, super familiar, fuzzy little bees that you could probably go in your backyard and find right now. Every spring, something amazing happens. The big, amazing, fuzzy, adorable queen bumblebees that are spending all winter underground, they emerge and they start flying around, collecting pollen and then doing something called nest searching. You'll see them in the spring. They're like as big as ping pong balls and they crawl underground and start a new nest for the season. So once that queen goes underground and establishes a nest, she's gonna start laying eggs and establishing a worker cast and then fly out and collect pollen for the rest of the season. She stays underground for the rest of her life and this is what her colony looks like. Look at this bumblebee colony. This is super, super cool. It looks completely different from a honeybee colony and it's just a mishmash of stacked of little jars it looks like called honey pots. In fact, you can see the queen right there, dead center, walking around, probably laying eggs in those little cells that'll be then tended and fed pollen by the other worker bees. Now we have about a dozen species of bumblebees here in Utah. This is not actually one of them. This is called Bombus impatiens, and this is a very important bee for agriculture. This is a domesticated bee that we'll use for pollinating things like tomatoes. But this bee is not actually native to this area. But scientists up at Utah State are working on domesticating some native bees like Bombus huntii to see if we can do agriculture in this area for crop pollination using our native bees. Now, as you're looking down inside of this colony, you're gonna see some of those cells are completely covered up. Those probably have the larvae or the pupae inside of those. those are future bees. But there's a whole bunch of other honey pots that are open on the top, and you can actually see it looks reflective down in there. That's honey. Bumblebees produce honey too, just like honeybees. Not nearly as much of it, and not on a scale where it'd be easy to harvest, but they do make honey, and it tastes good. I've dipped my finger in there and tasted it. It's delicious. So bees are super, super important insects, right? Because they're pollinating plants. Bees fly around, they drink nectar, and they pick up pollen, and they mash that pollen up, and they feed it to their kids, and they accidentally pass that pollen from one plant to another plant, and that leads to pollination and reproduction of plants. So all of the fruit that we eat, that's due to the work of bees for the most part. In fact, about 90% of flowering plants require pollination by insects or other animals. Most of that is done by bees. And that includes things like the honeybee, but also bumblebees, orchard mason bees, leaf cutter bees, sweat bees, carpenter bees, a whole bunch of different types of bees out there flying around pollinating these plants and doing it totally free. Scientists have tried to quantify exactly how much work these bees are doing, and it equates to billions of dollars a year that these bees are doing, and we're not paying them a dime. Okay, one more crazy cool fact about bees. This is one of my favorite facts about bees. Not all bees pollinate. Remember, pollination is plant reproduction, and not all bees help the plants reproduce. Some bees just visit flowers and they drink the nectar and they fly on without transferring pollen. They're kind of like window shoppers. They go into a store and they mess stuff up and they leave without actually buying anything. And some bees, they don't actually visit flowers at all to collect pollen. They actually steal the pollen from other bees. These are called cuckoo bees. They're actually parasites. They're parasite other bee nests. They don't do any pollination at all. All right, guys, that's about all the time we have for today. We talked about bumblebees and all sorts of different bees. We talked about their importance and plant reproduction. Awesome, really good stuff. I love bees. If you like this video, please do me a favor, like the video and share it with your friend because I want as many people to learn about these amazing pollinating insects as possible. Better yet, subscribe so when we have cool content like this in the future, you can get it delivered right to you. And do me a favor, if you have a comment, if I got the gears turning, leave it in the comments down below. We'll answer it when we can or just better yet, show up in person. I want to show you these amazing bees in person here at the Butterfly Biosphere. Thank you so much.